Salutations, scapegoats. Automatic here for Automatic Games. Thanks for joining me for Season 3, Episode 3 of our XCOM 2 series. In our previous installments, Bravo Squad set down in West Africa and infiltrated the Advent Forge. They returned from that successful op with a stasis suit which we have yet to examine, but we surely will. As to this episode, while we don't have anything slated exactly, um, we're just going to react to whatever crops up. So at this time, we are looking at the Gorilla Tactics School. There in the foreground doing chin-ups is Bridget Michaels. Uh, boy, does she have a story to tell. But as we've discussed, she doesn't tell. Anyhow, she's definitely a woman haunted by her past. So, enough about her, let's turn our attention to the Geoscape, where I believe we're gonna knock some progress off of that Avatar project. This facility was clearly of critical importance to the aliens, Commander. This setback, along with the loss of the specimen your team recovered, will no doubt slow their work on the Avatar project. Excellent. So with that out of the way, we're going to set course to the central United States and investigate that road traffic. Oh, hell. That was close. I thought that UFO was coming in. The last thing we need is to be shot down again. So we're going to initiate a scan. No, we're not. New targets acquired. As is usual, we'll have three. We have to choose one. One of them is here in the western United States. We're going to pass. Uh, this next one is in Mexico. And now well, let's have a look at the one in South America. Yeah, that, that'll grant us some supplies, which we'll happily take. So let's set course to South America. And more specifically, this operation is around the, uh, the city of Cordoba in Argentina. So, Alpha Squad is on deck to deploy. Let's have a look at him. Alpha Squad is, as always, commanded by Javier Valdez, codenamed Old School. He's bringing an EMP grenade and a med kit. He is joined in the field by Miles Upshore, codenamed Outlast, bringing plasma grenades, also a med kit. Also, uh, Manny Fawcett, codenamed Manny Faces, bringing the battle scanner and spider suit. Bailey Benton, codename Proxy, bringing the Skulljack and a Plasma Grenade. Sandra Baird, codename Snugs, bringing the Mimic Beacon, Blue Screen Rounds, and a Frost Bomb. Finally, Carl Ham, codenamed Lead, bringing several med kits and a Plasma Grenade. There you have it. Alpha Squad, you may board when ready. Ranger deployed. We're in the pipe. Five by five. Copy Firebrand. Begin your approach. We're seeking every possible outlet to gain information on the aliens' latest project. And in this case, that means infiltrating one of their facilities to access an exposed terminal connected to their network. Hostile forces will be in position to defend the site, so we'll have to neutralize any threats to lock down the area. Recover whatever you can. We need that data if we're going to stop their progress. As you can see, Alpha Squad wasted no time altering their uniforms. Helmets have been chugged. You can see that uh, Bailey Benton has uh, actually added a mohawk to his helmet, so I guess he'll be keeping the helmet. Even the squad leader chucked his helmet. That's neither here nor there. Anyways, Alpha Squad is boots on the ground. Shortly following deployment on the roof of this church, Alpha Squad is scolded by an angry Colonel Van Dorn, chiding them for disregarding his uniform's mandate, essentially saying that if he catches them do it again, heads are going to roll. Well, Alpha Squad kind of shrugs this off. They certainly have more important matters to attend to, and as to whether or not there's any teeth in that threat, I suppose time will tell. As to the mission at hand, Alpha is tasked with, um, hacking a terminal located just across the street from this church in a warehouse. And Valdez has devised a plan, a tried and true tactic 
that, uh, you know, we've utilized in the past to success. Hopefully that will happen again. Um, basically, old school and proxy, they're gonna operate independent of the rest of Alpha Squad. They're gonna get in as close to the target objective as possible without being seen. At some point, the remainder of the squad will go loud, hoping to draw the attention of any sentries surrounding the objective. As those sentries move in on the bulk of the squad, that should open up a path for both Valdez and Benton. They'll close in, hack the device, and then reunite with the rest of Alpha Squad. And as to the squad going loud, their targets will be those uh, just recently revealed targets in this parking lot across the street. Um, I want to say it's an Advent officer, a trooper, and a mech. To that end, Snugs is going to close in and try to get a better line of sight. She'll definitely be going for the mech considering she has those blue screen rounds. But before she does, of course we want to make sure that the coast is clear for both old school and proxy. So, Proxy is going to drop down, rather old school will. It'll move up to this half wall. And the way ahead does look clear. So he'll move the rest of the way. And, uh, yeah. I guess that gives us a green light to open up. Um, I feel that the most, most of the squad can open up without, without those two being compromised. So, let's turn our attention back to Snugs. She's gonna target that mech and open fire. And hell yeah, that's... That's the blue screen rounds, that's the damage they do combined with the accuracy of Snugs and the rest... is history. The Advent Officer... decides to run for cover, so too the Trooper... Outlast opens fire, fails to connect, lead... Shoots and scores a hit against the trooper. Manny targets the officer and puts him down in one shot. Did you see that one? So good deal. It appears the officer dropped some gear in the field. Proxy is gonna catch up with old school. And folks, it's on. Got some hostile group over here. And we've got two more on the grid, another trooper and an Archon inside the objective warehouse. As to that remaining trooper, he is running for help. Whether he brings back others or not is non-consequential. In fact, we do want to attract attention. That is, after all, part of the plan. Outlast will move up by this silver vehicle and he'll be taking a shot at that withdrawing trooper. Fails to connect, though he does hit that blue car. It's still moving. Although I doubt that the blue vehicle is an advent vehicle. As the lead, he'll be going into Overwatch. Manny will also take a shot at the retreating trooper. Chances are, he'll hit. Don't want to jinx him, but... There you have it, trooper down. And that's the thing about Manny, he is a reliable, long-range sniper. Though, so, yeah, I, I really don't want to jinx him by calling out his hits before he makes them. Anyhow, Snugs is going to move behind this tree. Ultimately, she'll be moving towards that dropped gear as to Proxy and, uh, and Old School. They will continue on their course, again, moving under the radar, and they'll be using this garage door as a POE. The fact remains, there is an Archon and a Trooper on the other side of it. Those two have to be lured out by the rest of the squad before these two can uh, proceed if they intend to, you know, keep con concealment. Um, and one would think that that car explosion would get the attention of the Archon Trooper pairing, but apparently it does not. Lead is going to drop down and use this tree as cover, seeing as... One can only presume that if Advent comes, they're going to be coming from the opposite direction. Outlast will uh, shift positions and go into Overwatch. As to Manny, he's going to occupy Leeds' former position, and he will reload. 
Ready to go. Now, Snugs, she's gonna make a play for that gear. Absolutely. And it's another laser sight. We'll take it. She covered. will continue moving up by this burned out car. Old school and proxy. Um, they're gonna have to hold position. Again, we've we've got to do something about that Archon and Trooper. And I think the only thing for it is for the uh, bulk of the squad to advance, hoping to catch their eye. To that end, lead will lead the way, and that'll do it. Here comes the Archon. Fortunately, it's only one of them, and it's not the Archon King. Lead's gonna take a shot. No joy. It's still moving. Outlast, um, rather than take a, a, a typical shot, he's gonna deploy some heavy ordnance, firing a plasma grenade that direction. While it won't do as much damage, it will be guaranteed damage. And so it is. Next up... ...is gonna be Manny. Um, he's gonna utilize lightning hands, thus giving him a free sidearm shot before he fires with his rifle. And the first shot connects. Let's hope the second one does as well. And it sure as hell does. The Archon is down. Not that leaves sure. one trooper on the grid. And as to Manny, he's uh he's gonna go into Overwatch. Got it covered. Snugs will move up on that trooper. Heading out. And as you might guess, she's gonna open up on it. No joy. That is not good. Burning through ammo. Please. Well, I, I think this clears the way for Proxy and old school. Proxy's gonna go ahead and open up the garage door. And effect entry. So this is not to say that that trooper's gonna pose a threat, but if it did, unbeknownst to it, it has two XCOM troopers behind it as well. Old school will come in next to a proxy. And we've got something else outside. Oh shit. Looks like Hard enough. Let's make sure to take it out this time. Pardon by French, but I fear that by mentioning the Archon King earlier. I veritably summoned him. So that's that's not good. We definitely want to accomplish our mission before before we even think about dealing with the Archon King. We're running out of time. Get to that terminal. So lead will advance behind this light pole that trooper is now behind a bus stop. Lead is going to toss a grenade. Try to break up that cover and do a little damage to the trooper as well. Which he does. Outlast will move up to Leeds former position. And he's gonna take a shot at that trooper. There we go. Outlast right? gets himself a kill. The Not trooper enough, yeah. is down. As to Manny, he'll go into Overwatch. Uh, Snugs is going to back away from that flaming vehicle. On my way. And she will uh, right go into Overwatch. Affirmative, moving out. Proxy will approach this door. And he's going to crack it open. Objective in range. 
Commander, we have confirmation of the exposed access point. Rather than go in himself, Old School tells Proxy to get back outside with the rest of the squad. Meanwhile, Old School is going to make entry. And, well, probably should have moved him to the green square, but oh well. He'll deal with it in subsequent turns. Proxy's going to move towards the exit, intending to reunite with the rest of the squad. And fortunately, that car explosion does not necessarily elicit attention from the Archon King. That would be bad. Overwatch. Lead goes into Overwatch. Outlast reloads. Ready to rock. Affirmative. Covering now. And goes into Overwatch as well as to Manny. Overwatch. Overwatch. Um, Snugs is going to move over by this burned out Absolutely. vehicle once more. And she'll reload as well. We're green to go. As the proxy, he's going to open up this door. He is still in concealment. Uh, so too is old school, but old school will forfeit that soon enough when he initiates a hack on that terminal. Proxy's going to post up behind this fence, which provides decent cover. Okay, now Old School's going to approach the terminal, but he's not going to do anything yet. Um, just be, by nature of him having to move to get to the terminal, that's just not going to suffice. Um, he wants to... Yeah, we got it, Central. He wants to be able to dedicate, uh, you know, the first part of his move to hacking and the second part to actually maneuvering. Um, rather than maneuvering and then hacking, seeing as hacking will reveal his position. Okay, we want to move Outlast. Um, actually, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and move Snugs up. Sure thing. Come get some. And she'll go into Overwatch and Outlast. We'll move over to her former position or, or near enough to it. He'll go into Overwatch, Proxy, Overwatch as well. So, as to old school, it's time to initiate the hack. And bonuses, uh, well, both of those numbers stink, so we're going to go for the harder one, might as well. Yeah, because we weren't going to get either of them anyway. Nonetheless, uh, we have breached the network, we are in, but... Old School's position has been revealed to the enemy. Confirm successful acquisition of the advent files. Eliminate any remaining hostiles in the area. And so we've been ordered to uh, exterminate all remaining hostiles. Um, I'm on it. And so, of course, that will include the Archon King. Old School snaps it outside. What was that? And he's gone into Overwatch. So up on the roof, we've got two Mutons and a Codex. Manny fires at and hits. Well, judging from the armor, that's going to be one of the Mutons. Snugs opens fire. No joy. Oh, come on, focus. Mutons advance, the Codex starts to withdraw. Reaction fire from old school. It's no good. Come on. Okay. So as to lead. Um, he's gonna maneuver over by this burned out vehicle. And he uh, he's going to take a shot at that wounded Muton. Does not connect. The target. I'm running low on ammo. Let's see. Manny has a well. He's got a shot on the Codex, and you know he'll probably hit. Let's do it. Yep. See, I jinxed him. It was a miss. But that was a long shot anyhow. Okay, so... Outlast, um... 
He's considering firing a uh, plasma grenade, but it doesn't look like he's got range. Actually, um, we'll come back to him. We'll have Snug's maneuver. On my way. And she's gonna fire at that muton there, the wounded one. Damn. Damn. Um, Draining ammo fast. Al Lass will occupy her former position. I guess that'll be okay. Yeah. No one is overly confident with uh, Outlast's uh, accuracy, so he's gonna he's gonna deploy another plasma grenade. This one absolutely oh, should kill this muton, considering it's already injured. Um, and it does. So Outlast gets himself another kill, and I mean, nonetheless, he's he's a far cry from his predecessor, Noisy Boy. Who was definitely the the more accurate of the two? Just a better soldier altogether. Anyways, uh, old school's gonna move inside. He's gonna go for a flank of this second muton, and come on, this has to hit. Yes, not only does it hit, it takes that muton out of the equation. So all that remains is the codex. Ask everyone else, or they are going to start moving forward. Um, Valdez reminds them that should the Codex go back and get the Archon King, Alpha Squad needs to be indoors. Don't want to fight the Archon King outside. And sure enough, the Codex is withdrawing further. Alpha Squad is in pursuit. Uh, but they don't want to follow it too far. Because I think we all know where it's heading. Locked and loaded. And if you don't, yeah, it's heading directly to the Archon Key. Okay, I'll go. Why wouldn't it? Come get some. So the squad will slowly advance with an exception, and that is Manny. Uh, he's gonna remain on this church roof. You know, should the Archon King get active, Hello. Manny can always drop down off the roof and enter the church. Um, and again, the reason you would want to be indoors is, is one, the Archon King flies, and two, and it can call down that hellfire from the skies. And so being indoors negates that. Okay. Proxy will head in and duck behind the console. Uh, old school will take uh, serious cover. Here we go, folks. Once and for all, Commander. Let's get it done. Again, Central has a uh, instructed Alpha Squad to take down the Archon King. But it's not just the King. I mean, it's he's accompanied by two Archons and the Codex. This is uh, this is bad. This is real bad. Codex uh, teleports. And of course, it's using a side bomb. Well, bad just went to worst. Um, that'll force those troops affected by it to have to reload. And of course, every time. Oh, that, that Archon opens up on and strikes lead, inflicting injury. Here comes the second Archon. Yeah, every, everybody that has to reload, the result of that side bomb gives the Archon King yet another turn. Um... I... Nobody in Alpha Squad sees how this could possibly work. Especially old school. And he's, he's gonna do something he, he is not fond of doing. He's gonna contact Firebrand and ask her to provide extraction. I mean, after all, the primary mission was accomplished, but this is, in his mind, the only way that his squad survives. Already there. 
and so Upshore wastes no time. He wants to be the first out of here. And indeed, Valdez has ordered his squad to withdraw. That was close. The Archon King takes a shot at Snugs. Luckily, it's a miss. As to Manny. Well, actually, let's have uh, let's have people get out of that Cybomb radius. Snugs is uh, she's gonna move at least over to this vehicle and behind good cover. The Archon King enters the warehouse. Uh, lead. He, he doesn't need to be told twice. He, he is going to go ahead and move to extraction. And again, it's a shame. Uh, you know, Alpha Squad is a squad that, that deals with these unique aliens. Or has done so in the past. But... Okay, good. Valdez uses Blade Storm on the Archon King, does some damage, and lights that thing on fire. The Archon King grabs Valdez and, and takes him through the roof and into the air. Hopefully the burning damage will compel the Archon King to drop him, but we'll, we'll see. Lead is out of here. As ordered. As to Manny, he could make it, but no. And he doesn't trust the burning damage. He is going to take a shot at the Archon King. I mean, after all, he can probably hit it. And he does. Nice. Nice. Archon King comes up to the edge of that building. Outlast. He needs no more. He doesn't need to be told twice either. He's out of here. He wanted to leave the second they arrived. Sad, perhaps, but true. I mean, Outlast is scared. And he has every right to be on this particular mission, because, honestly, let's face it, things have gotten scary. Um, Proxy cannot quite make it to extraction. So, instead, he will focus his attention on this nearby Codex. Yeah, he's gonna go in and swing at it. Thus breaking his concealment, and he does a little damage. The Archon King continues to burn. Good stuff there, at least. And the Codex is cloning. It's, it's clone actually appears in the Cybomb radius. The Archon King takes a shot at Snugs. Fails to connect. As to old school. You know, I hate to say it, well, no. He is not withdrawing. If he has to die fighting a rear guard to save his squad, he will do that. He's gonna fire at the Codex. And he puts it down. It's a very selfless act on his part, but he strikes me as a selfless man. And yeah, it's a troubling decision. Yeah, I kind of wondered how that'd play out. Um, the Codex died from its own Cybob. Well, that, that's altogether fortunate. And an Archon closes in on squad leader who takes a blade storm swing, but it fails to connect. The Archon retaliates and wounds Valdez. Damn. Valdez is now surrounded. He takes another blade storm swing. This one does hit. His victim, no doubt, will retaliate. No. Valdez is down. Wait, he's still alive. He's, um, yeah, he's bleeding out. But he is unconscious. Um, I just don't know what can be done for him. Um, sure thing. 
Snugs moves to extraction. You know, she's gonna she's gonna do what she can. She's gonna throw a uh, a mimic beacon. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it'll work. Maybe not. But she's gonna do it. Catch me off, how about that? And Yarkon King fires at her as a result and inflicts fairly serious injury. She can she still get out of here? Yes, she can. Just in time. And she will. Hoping all the while that by some miracle her squad leader gets out. But it doesn't look good. I'll tell you what though, Proxy, he's gonna he's gonna get exceedingly brave. Not a problem. And he's gonna do the unthinkable. He's gonna move in among these Archons and try to get his squad leader out of here. It's nuts. But here he goes. Yeah, he has picked up Valdez. And he, he may be out in the open, but he's doing it. Sure thing. He, he's trying to take the body to extraction. Is he alone? He's not alone out here. Manny is still looking on. Let's see, uh, the Archon King's coming after him. Pulls him up into the air. Come on, Manny, you have got to hit him. You've just got to. Snap. Bingo. Hell yeah. Oh yeah, that's got to tick off the Archon King. And meanwhile, an Archon goes after the, uh... The attention whore. And, you know, so far... Oh, this ain't good. Who's this one going after? Mimic Beacon. Good deal. And the Mimic Beacon's out of the game. But that really... That move by Snugs deploying that... It saved Proxy. And potentially Valdez, if Proxy can get him out of here. hell was that noise? Anyhow, um... I have a hard time believing that this transpired, but Proxy has just... Oh no, 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 no. This could be it. Well, the Archon King does score a hit against Proxy, but it's not quite enough. Feedback confirmed. Thankfully, and, and Proxy is out of here with Valdez in tow. That's amazing, folks. That blows my freaking mind. Well, Manny's not gonna stick around now. Good to go. He may not be the squad leader, but he is the last man out. And he's going for it. As to the Archon King, the Archon King is letting him go without taking a shot. And Manny is away. XCOM operatives are secure. Firebrand returning to base. Mission parameters completed. That was unreal, folks. I, uh... I can hardly believe what just transpired. That Proxy got him out of... I mean, there are so many selfless acts. There's an argument to be made over what just transpired. And people will fall in line on both sides of the argument. Um, certainly Alpha Squad is going to rally around their commander. Who probably saved them from the wrath of the Archon King. Had they stayed, there's really no question but that some of them would have died. And so their commander called that withdrawal. On the other side of the argument, you might find somebody like Colonel Van Dorn, who may see that withdrawal as nothing short of insubordination.
Alpha Squad is back aboard the Avenger. And that position taken by someone like Van Dorn um, would go a long way in explaining why it is that Javier Valdez, old school, is not going to receive his promotion right now. We're going to forego that and turn immediately to the material gains. Because, yeah, frankly, there's a question as to whether or not he deserves the promotion or whether he deserves scrutiny for extracting in the face of the Archon King. I, each viewer can come up with their own call on that. I know where I would where I would uh, fall. I would. Well, I'll just kind of keep that close to the vest because our next episode will will more closely examine that question. So we did come back with a Codex brain. Hello, Commander. But see, you know, I mean, wh so we didn't get the supplies. I don't think that we were, or did we? You know, on the one hand, you've, you've got the spokesman here congratulating us. On the other hand, you, you have it clearly saying mission failed. But you know damn well that we completed our primary mission, which was indeed hacking into that advent terminal. Well, that was done. Um... All that remained after that was to clear out the rest of enemy advent forces. And obviously Alpha Squad chose not to do that, or rather their squad leader chose not to do that. And so you're getting mixed messages even upon return. And so yeah, as, as I said, the next episode will more closely examine the repercussions of Valdez's decision in the field. And... Uh, yeah, what consequences may follow for both him and Alpha Squad. Anyways, this is Automatic for Automatic Games. If you like this, like this, and if you are subscribed, I will talk to you soon, friends.